Hello everyone, welcome back to our second discussion in Dynamics. Here is plan for today. I believe that last time, on Wednesday, we were talking about what to, what to do in these two cases, when acceleration is a function of time and acceleration is a function of velocity, right? I also believe that in the lecture, uh, Professor Zin uh, covered this case, what to do when acceleration is function of position, right? I believe so. So today, what we will do, we will just focus on what to do when acceleration is constant, and then we will start a new topic, okay? We will start it with a brief lecture review on what happened yesterday in the lecture, and yesterday in the lecture you were talking about Cartesian coordinate system. And then we will do uh, example number two that is related to Cartesian coordinates. Sounds like a plan for today? Okay. So let's let's dive straight into our our discussion. Example number one. Feel free to read and understand the problem statement before we start our solution. And by the way, we probably don't have to do it. Did you get my email yesterday? Yeah. So I will send you these emails one day before the discussions. Yes, in the evening. Yeah, around five or six. Okay. Um, yeah, and that problem statement is so short and easy that let's maybe dive straight into solution. Okay, so in this case, we have acceleration that is constant and we are still in the rectilinear motion, yes? Our particle will go, will move along that line, yeah? This is our traject trajectory. Trajectory, right? Mm. And we know that our acceleration is 5 meters per second. Moreover, we know that at time instant zero, our velocity is 200 meters per second, and we start our motion with position zero. And what do they ask us to find? They ask us to find velocity and position at time instant 20 seconds. And then in part B, they ask us to find position when velocity is 400 meter meters per second. Okay, so what I would like to propose, uh, let's maybe restate, restate this question in more mathematical form, okay? Let's do it here. So in part A, they ask us to first express, express velocity as a function of time and position as a function of time, and then find velocity at 20 and position at 20. Yeah, this is what they ask us to do. And then in part B, they told us to express, I believe, position as a function of velocity. And they, then they told us to tell them what is S at 400. This is our goal for today. And here is our solution. Part A. So in part A, they ask us to express something as a function of time. Yep. So I think that you guys know which type of, which definition of acceleration we are going to, we are going to go for, yeah? So our acceleration will be expressed in a following way. And by the way, acceleration is constant. And it is equal to 5 meters per second square. OK, so we can write something like that. dv is equal to a dt. Since a is constant, let's replace it with 5, OK? Because it's 5 all the time. All right, and now we, we should uh, integrate. Yeah. We should integrate. Um, what are the integ integration bounds? Aha, at time instant zero, we have a velocity 200. So at time instant zero, we have 200. And then at some time instant, we'll end up with some velocity. I think I know how to integrate that. So this will be V from 200 to V, 
and this would be equal to 5, 5t. All right, so v minus 200 is equal to 5t. Let's continue here. And I believe that we found velocity expressed as a function of time, because this is equal to 5t plus 200. <coughs> this is velocity as a function of time. And what do they ask us to find? Aha, they asked us to give them this, v at 20, 5 times 20 plus 200, I believe this is 300. 300 meters per second. Okay, this is our answer. Any questions to what, to what any questions about what happened so far? No questions, yes? Yeah, no. <laughs> it's good, yes, we can continue, yes? Okay. So now let's go one step further, yes, to position, yes. Um, and again we are operating in the time domain. So definition we're gonna go for is v is equal to d s dt yeah so our and our v is expressed here yes yeah, so i just have to take that expression here and i have to just plug them pl plug it in there yeah oops sorry so we will end up with d s equal to 5t plus 200 dt. Let's integrate. And I don't know what's going on with me, but I forgot what the integration bounds were. Okay, so what are the initial conditions? Let's put them here. Oops. Let's, put them. Let's put them here. Um, so at time instant zero, we are we are at position zero. Okay, so we have time instant zero here, position zero here, and then at some time instant we are at position s. Let's integrate quickly. So this would be s. This will be equal to five divided by two t squared plus two hundred t. Great. So our position as a function of time is equal to two point five t squared plus 200t. And they ask us again, again to give them s at time instant 20. So this is 2.5 times 20 squared plus 200 times 20. Grab your calculators and obtain that s at 20 is 5,000. Yes, it is 5,000 meters. Okay, so we are done with part A. End of part A. Any questions? Easy or hard? Easy. Okay, part B. And I again <laughs> forgot what, what they asked us for. Sorry, I'm, I will scroll up the board, okay? <laughs> so, aha, they asked us to find position when velocity, velocity is 400. Okay. So, since they asked us to find position, we will go for the different definition of acceleration, yes? So, this time we will use A that is equal to V dV dS, right? Mm. And A is still constant. This is equal to 5 meters per second square. Okay, so our V dV is equal to A dS. Yeah. And analogically, since A is constant, I'm, going, I'm just going to replace, replace it with 5. I hope you don't mind. And let's integrate again. And integration bounds. Okay, I don't know what's. Okay, I need to copy it one more time. I don't know what's what's happening with me today. 
I have to copy this thing in here, and now I will know what the integration bounds are. So, I believe that at position zero, at position zero, our velocity is 200, yes? So at position zero, posi velocity is 200. And then at some position s, we will end up with some velocity. And again, I think I know how to integrate that. So this will be one half v squared, 200 to v, and this will be just five times um, position. Okay, let's plug in integration bounds. One half v squared minus one half 200 squared. This is equal to five s. And they ask us to express s as a, as a function of velocity. So we will just leave s at this, at the left hand side, and this will be equal to. You know what? Maybe we can do it a little bit later. Yeah, let's maybe do one half v squared minus one half times. So actually, I can multiply it like by two also. Yes, so it will be v squared minus four and four zeros, right? Four zeros, and this is ten s. Okay, so we already see that our s as a function of velocity will be equal to 0.1 v squared minus 4 and 3 zeros. And they ask us to find s when v is 400. Let me double check. Yep, v must be 400. So s at 400, oops, is equal to 0 0.1 times 400 squared minus 4,000. If you grab your calculators, you will obtain that this is equal to 12,000 meters or 12 kilometers, yeah, or 12 kilometers. However, I prefer answers expressed in meters. Yeah, so let's, let's stay here. Okay, and this is answer B. Answer B. Mike, is yours. Any questions about what happened so far? Of course, yes. Because uh, what's your name? James. So what James said that we can actually, so in part A, we expressed velocity as a function of time. Yep. And then we expressed position as a function of time. Right. So what you say in more mathematical form, yes, uh, is that we, we should take, the, we can take this equation. We can express T as a function of velocity. Yep. And we can plug this one here. Yes, and then it will result it will result in having s as a function of velocity. So the answer uh, to your question is yes. <laughs> yes, you can do that. Yeah. However, my goal was to just show you how to use the, this definition. You know. Yeah. All right. As you can see, it, it, in this course there are multiple ways to solve the problem. Yes. I usually show the fastest one. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Any other question? Thanks, James, by the way. It's a nice question. So what do you want to do? Do you want to do lecture review? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, guys. So this is what I prepared. Brief lecture review. And yes, yesterday's lecture was on a Cartesian coordinate system, right? So in this course, we'll talk about three different uh, coordinate systems, okay? One of them is Cartesian coordinate system. Mm, and we use these coordinate systems to describe the motion of a particle, yes? Or describe the motion in, in general. So what is specific about Cartesian coordinate system? These two, these two unit vectors, i and j. 
And what is specific about them is that they are constant. Okay? Regardless of anything, they won't change their, 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 their direction. Yes? I will be po always pointing this way, and J will be always pointing that way, regardless of anything. I'm saying that because in future we will learn two new coordinate systems that actually change their, their orientation with time. Okay? But it will happen, I think, next week. We will see. Yeah. Anyway. So what I would like to write in here is that I is constant vector and it is always equal to one zero zero. Okay? And J is also equal to constant vector. But J always points upwards. One, zero, zero, one, one. Okay? So, we just use them to describe the motion of a particle. But before we start our description, we need a motion and we need a, part we need a particle, yes? So, please assume that this is our trajectory, okay? Our particle, P, let's say, our point just follows along that, traje follows that trajectory, okay? It's just following the trajectory, yeah, in time. Um, okay, and what we would like to what we would like to know is position of that particle, right? And in order to know it, we introduce position vector r. Position vector r. Okay. And that position vector changes in time as well, yeah? Because let's say that uh, our vector looks like that when, I don't know, time is equal to four seconds, okay? So instead of that t, I can put four. And what is your favorite number? Six, okay, so seven. So for time instant seven, <laughs> for time instant seven, let's say that our particle particle will be here, okay? So you can clearly see, guys, that our vector r will change in time. This will be r at 6, okay? Let's say that's 6 seconds. <laughs> okay. Yeah? You see that our r just follows the particle. r just points where the particle is. Yeah? Okay. Is that clear so far? Yeah? So R is a function of time. And now the question is, what R is exactly? Yeah? So R, um, R can be expressed in the following way. Something times I plus something times J plus something times K. Okay. So in this course, we, we actually usually, we usually stop here. Okay. Because we, in this course, we focus on planar motion. Yeah. Motion in 2D. However, there, there will be like one or two problems we will cover in 3D, okay? So something times k. Usually this will be zero. Usually it will be zero, okay? But like sometimes it won't be zero. Mm. So the question is what, what I should put here in front of i, j, and k? That's easy because I just have to project this black vector onto i and j. Yeah? So I can just find this projection, this will be x of t, and I need to have this projection. This will be y of t, yeah? And then in 3D, I will also have a z, z component, yeah? So I will just have x of t in here, y of t in here, and z of t in here, right? Okay, so this is US notation, yeah? It's not my favorite one. My favorite one is my favorite one. So my favorite, favorite notation is this one. Uh, R is equal to x of t, y of t, z of t. We will use both notations in, in my discussions, okay? But probably more we will use this one. <laughs> um, cool. We have position. Mike is yours. Questions?
am I making you more confused than you were before? Yeah, because I am making myself a bit more confused. But okay, it's what I, I'm doing. Okay, so we need to find velocity and acceleration, yes? Because we have position, then we need velocity and acceleration, yeah. So definition for acceleration is unchangeable, yes? Velocity is always first time derivative of position. Yep. So the, the, the definition doesn't change anyway. And not in this course, not in any other course, not in other sphere of life. Regardless of they tell you, of, of what they tell you, definition is definition, unchangeable. So if I attack R with my derivative, we will end up with something like that. dx dt times i plus dy dt times j plus dz dt k. By the way, do you see here, I am silently doing chain rule. Do you see that, guys? I will show, let me tell you what I'm talking about. So actually what I'm doing here is, to, to this first component, if you look at that first component, what I'm actually doing is this, d dt of xi. Yeah, so if we use, no, it's not a chain rule, what I'm talking about, it's a product rule. Yes, sorry, it's a product rule. So what I'm actually doing here is dx dti plus x di dt. Yeah. However, the second component is zero vector because this is zero vector. Why? Because for the 700th time today, i is constant. Yes? i is a constant vector. Yes? So if I take di dt, we will end up with zero, zero, zero. Yep? Or zero vector. Same story with j. j is also constant. So dj dt is again 0, 0, 0, because j is constant. And the same with k. Are we on the same page? Wait, that's for acceleration? What is that? This? Why are they all 0? Oh, because they are constant. Uh, i always points in that direction. Okay, the, it's not for acceleration, it's for, for the general uh, definition of a constant yeah. object, okay. yes? Yeah, yeah. so uh, the derivative of a constant scalar of a constant function is zero. Yeah. The derivative of a constant vector is zero, 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 because it has to be vector. Cool, yeah. and name? Jaden. J? Jaden. Jaden, okay. Um, by the way, were you here on Wednesday? No, yeah. I... Okay, so that's what I needed to know because there was. I will tell you later. Yeah. Okay. Mm, okay, guys. Uh, did I make you confused with these zero zero zeros? Cool. Uh, and again, one more thing. Just to save some ink, we will use such notation. Instead of dx dt, we will write x dot i plus y dot j plus z dot k. Just to save some ink. Yeah. Uh, International notation, I mean international engineering notation for the derivative over time is dot above the variable, okay? So dot above the variable means d dt of that variable, okay? So what? We are left with acceleration, I think. So definition for acceleration is also unchangeable. Acceleration is always dv dt. I must change my ink color. So this will be second time derivative of position times i plus second time derivative of y component over time times j plus second time derivative of z times k. And just to save some ink, we can write x double dot i plus y double dot j plus z double dot k. And I usually I usually mark i, j, and k with different color just to see, just to di differentiate them, just to separate my, my expression, yes? 
but to be honest, I don't do it too often because I, I go for my favorite, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite notation. So V, I usually write like X dot, Y dot, Z dot. And acceleration, I obviously write usually as X double dot, Y double dot, Z double dot. I believe this is the end of my lecture review. Any questions? Was it okay? Yeah. Okay, guys. So, seriously, no questions? And everything is clear, yes? Because if there are no questions, that means that everything is clear or nothing is clear. <laughs> everything is clear, yes? So, what do you want to do? Example number two? Let's do it? Okay, let's do it. Um... So, as usually, Take some, take a couple of seconds to familiarize yourself with the problem statement before we start our solution. Okay, so what do we have in here? What do we have in here? Aha, we have our particle, our spacecraft. We're gonna model it as a particle. And that spacecraft has two engines, yes? One engine uh, pushes our spacecraft towards that direction, and the other engine pushes our aircraft towards that direction. And they ask us to find a ah, position, X position, so position along that direction, yes, horizontal direction, and velocity, velocity component, the horizontal velocity component, after four seconds. And here are our initial conditions. We start from velocity zero at position zero. Okay, in other words, this is what we have. We have such situation. We have such situation. This is our spacecraft. And A1 causes motion this, in this way. This is A1. And A2 causes motion in this way, right? However, what we want to have, we want our accelerations to be expressed in these two directions, AX and AY, right? We want AX, yeah, because they ask us to find what happens along the horizontal di direction. Um, oh, and by the way, of course, you, you all can see it, yeah, just expressions for these two, A1 and A, A2, are given here. Okay, guys, so how to jump, how to jump from picture on the left to picture on the on the right. Simple vector projections, right? We just have to uh, project these two red vectors on these two black lines, yes? Horizontal line and, and vertical line. Yep. Let's do it. So I believe that this will be first projection. And this will be our second projection, yes? And one thing is missing in the drawing, it's the angle, yes? We need to know the rotation angle. Let me introduce it. This angle is 30. Okay, so if this angle is 30, I believe that this angle is 30 as well, right? So that means that this angle is 30 as well. Okay, guys, I need some help. This component, will be A1 sine or cosine. This one will be, okay, take one more guess. Cosine, yes, great, this is cosine. Cosine 30 degrees. And this one has no other choice. This one has to be A1 sine 30 degrees. Thank you for collaboration. <laughs> okay, we are done with first vector. Now let's project the other vector on these two components. Mm. So if 30 is in here, 
I believe that 60 will be here, so 30 has to be here. Okay. Okay. How about this this one? Oh, sorry. So this one will be A2 sine or cosine? The horizontal one. This one. Okay, one more guess. Cosine. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is cosine 30 degrees. Guys, you will have an extra homework and you have extra homework. <laughs> Repeat uh, tri trigonometry, okay? <laughs> I'm not kidding. It will come back every single discussion. Okay, please. It's for your own for all your own sake. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And this one has no other choice. A two sine sine thirty degrees. Okay. Mm. I think we are ready to transfer our red vectors into blue vectors. Yeah. On the right. Okay. So I can write a x and a y that they are equal to. So I believe that AX will be equal to minus A1 sine 30 degrees minus A2 cosine 30 degrees. And AY will be equal to minus A1 cosine 30 degrees plus A2 sine 30 degrees. Yes, I, I believe I didn't make any mistake, right? By the way, do you know where those minus and pluses come from? Yes, you see that. Yeah, basically, this is when it comes to the, this expression, AX points towards the right, yeah? And these two guys, this component and this component, they point the other way, yeah? So we have two minuses here. And analogically, uh, in the Y component. Okay. What were the, what were the expressions for a1 and a2? Aha, they are here. So next step is to plugging plugging these expressions into into our uh, our new expressions. Yes, let's do it. So our ax will be equal to minus five times half and minus. 0 0.5, 1 minus 0 0.2 t, square root of 3 divided by 2. And ay, analogically, it will be minus 5 times square root of 3 over 2 plus 0 0.5, 1 minus 0 0.2 t, half. Okay, grab your calculators and uh, simplify these expressions. I did it yesterday at home. And I ended up with following expressions. Ax of t is equal to approximately 2.933, but negative, plus 0.0866t. And Ay I obtained recently as approximately minus 4.080 minus 0.05t. Awesome. Yeah. You you are with me, guys? Yeah. Good pace of the discussion. Yeah. Great. So we just found we, we just found these two blue vectors, ax and ay. Let's put it in the vector form. Okay. So you can equally write you can write uh, a as a function of time, and you can just I mean, I'm gonna copy them, yeah? So, sorry for those of you who are using pen and paper. Yeah, I'm just going to use latest technology. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so this is our expression for acceleration. Or if you, if you prefer, you can use uh, US notation, yeah? So you can just take first component Put it in the bracket and multiply it by i. And then you can take second component, put it in the bracket, and multiply it by j. And this is a little bit too big. I'm going to shrink it. 
I want to shrink you to this size, maybe. Yep. And as, as I promised, I will put I and J in different colors just to separate the components. Yeah, I don't know. I find this one, this notation clearer, but it's just my, my opinion. Yeah. You can have different opinion. Okay, guys. So we have our vector A, and they ask us to find velocity horizontal and position horizontal. Yes. So my strategy will be to take this first component and integrate it twice. Do you agree? Yeah, so let's do it. So in order to get in order to get um, Vx, we should go for this expression. Right? So d v x will be equal to this expression d t and we must integrate again a lot of integration yeah at the beginning at the beginning of this semester yes what were the what were the initial conditions My memory is not working recently well, so I'm just gonna remi remember myself about initial conditions here. Yeah, we start from rest. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so at time instant zero, we have zero velocity, and then at some time instant, we will have some velocity x, right? So this will be vx, and this is equal to minus 2.933t plus 0 0.0433 t squared. OK, so this is our velocity x as a function of time. And they ask us to find its value after 4 seconds, right? So let's do vx at 4. And if you grab your calculators, you will end up with the following value. This will be approximately minus 11 point 0.392 meters per second. Awesome. We are done with 50% of the problem. Now position. Yes. So our position has <coughs> following relation with dx. dx dt, right? So our dx will be, I believe, this expression. Yep. Yeah, I can copy th that expression here. I can put it in a bracket. And I, I can take an integral over time. So again, at time instant zero, we start at zero. And then at some time instant, we will have some position, yes? So our x will be equal to one half minus one half times 2.933 t squared plus one third times 0 0.0433 t cubed. OK, this is our x of t. And again, they ask us to find position at time instant 4. So plug in 4, grab our calculators, and obtain triumphantly that our position x is minus 22.540 meters. Cool. So this is our answer, and this is the end of the problem, by the way. However, I want to do a little bit more. I want to do 105%. If you don't mind. Do you mind? You have no choice, actually. <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. Anyway, any questions before I do 110%? Ladies first. Ladies first, yeah? Uh, it goes towards the left. 
So uh, look, and what's your name? Olivia. Ol Olivia. So look, these are our, our positive directions, right? So that means that if we specify x positive, positive that way, that we, and we obtain negative value, that means that our, our thing will be going this way. It's going this way. Yeah. Yes, sir. This is exactly the, 10 per, the extra 10% we are going to do. This is exactly the extra 10%, okay? Uh, and the answer is why we didn't do it, because this is the problem statement. <laughs> In the problem statement, they ask us only to do X. But do you want to do Y as well? Yeah. Your name? Nathan. Nathan. You ask a question, but you know the answer already. Yeah. So how would you obtain Y? So you want to have VY? And y position, yes? How would you do it? Uh, I'll just do the same thing. But uh, you will operate on, on this. On the, yeah. on the on the second second component. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So Nathan said that in order to obtain velocity in the y direction and position y, we should repeat exactly the same steps, right? J just work with this expression. We're gonna do it, okay, very quickly. I'm not going to do all the steps, yeah, because these are exactly the, all the, the same steps, and you guys will fall asleep, yes? So, uh, in order to obtain Vy, we just have to draw for Ay uh, and this definition. And if you do that, you will end up with such, such expression for Vy. Mm, I have it here. I did it yesterday. Mm. In here we will obtain, oh, I have it. This will be uh, minus 4.080 T minus 0 0.025 uh, T squared, yeah? And Vy at time instant four is approximately minus 16.72 meters per second, seven to zero, let's say. Okay, and then let's go one step further. So let's also obtain uh, position, so then vy is equal to dy dt, and if you integrate once, you guys will obtain y of t equal to following expression. Um, <laughs> minus 2.040 t squared minus one third 0 0.025 T cube. Y at time instant 4, plug in 4, grab your calculators, and obtain that this would be approximately minus 30T, 33.173 meters. All right, so we obtained values for velocities in both directions and positions in both directions. I want to draw it, actually. I actually would like to draw it. Unless you have questions. Are you following every single step? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, it's easy, right? Yeah. Just, yeah. Okay. So, so sorry that I am asking so many questions. You, yeah. Please forgive me, okay? <laughs> um, so this is a too big, too big. Mm. So guys, let's express our velocity in the vector form. Actually, velocity at time instant four. Okay. So I think that this component will go to the second row, yeah? This will go to the second row. And the one we, we found earlier will, will go to the first row. This one. Why you are not listening to me? <coughs> I'm talking to my computer. And this is approximately, and this, is, and the, this component is zero, yeah? And how about position? At time instant four, I think that y component will go to the second row. Z component will be zero. And what was the x component? Where are you? Oh, you, there you are. It's here. And I forgot about the unit, yes? Because in here I should put meters per second. So this will be meters per second, and this will be in meters. Yep, so this is where our spacecraft is after five seconds, uh, four seconds, 
and this is its velocity. Let's draw it quickly. Do we still have time? Yes, it's 11.46. It will take me like one minute, if you don't mind, yeah? So let's define our, our coordinate system here, maybe. And this is, of course, 0, 0, 0, yeah, 0, 0. And what is the position? Aha, this is our position. At time instant, time instant, four seconds. So I have to go kind of like three units down and two units left. Yes? So it will be minus 10, minus 20, minus 30. Yes? So our spacecraft will be here. This is R at four seconds. Okay, I even prepared a spacecraft for you guys. Check this out. I'm gonna take it <laughs> from there. I'm gonna paste it here, exactly here. And you should go back. Yeah, so after four seconds, our spacecraft is at this position, minus 33.173, and this is minus 22.173. Five four zero. How about velocity? So velocity will be minus eleven, minus sixteen. Dang! So it's again like minus. So it's like three units downwards and two units. But it doesn't have to be aligned. These two vectors are not aligned. Okay. So actually, our velocity will be probably pointing like in that way. So velocity of that velocity of that spacecraft will be following. This is this is what we what we obtained in here. And in here. Okay, I'm done with my 10%, 10 extra percent. Is it was it okay? Questions? You had a, a question? No. Okay, so you Why have a question. Why is velocity pointing in a different direction from like the way it's moving? Because uh, because it can first of all, and second of all, mm, uh, you can draw it at home. So so basically. Mm, based on these two, based on these uh, two uh, expressions, I kind of know that it will be pointing in a different way than, than the position vector. Okay. Okay. So it changes like yeah. over time. Yeah. Yeah. And velocity. If you do, we still have time. Yeah, guys. Ten more seconds. Yeah. So velocity is always. If we go back to our lecture review, velocity is always tangent to the trajectory. Okay. So. Velocity in this case will be pointing this way, yeah? Velocity at this point will be pointing this way. Okay, it will be tangent to the trajectory, yeah? So you can see that there, the black vector is clearly uh, not aligned with, with blue vector, yeah? Cool, because sometimes it doesn't make sense for me. Okay, the only thing I would like to say is that you should enjoy your weekend, okay? Make sure about that and see you next week. Ciao!